Go. Uh, my name is Jake Swimmer, and this is my lead performer presentation. So, uh, this is my image portrayal, like who or what I am on stage. I'll be performing or portraying a sort of like post punk sort of drum set for my lead performance. So, it'll be sort of the, the sort of look from like the underground look from like the early 80s to the early 90s sort of phase. So, I'll be doing it in a band of the period. So, it'll be sort of like an energetic set and mostly energetic anyway. There'll be some songs where it mellows out a bit to give like it more than just one feel. And I'll be engaging the performance a lot for the. It'll be a very engaging performance, so I'll try and get the crowd involved a lot more. I'll explain on that later. And I'll give a sort of a friendly attitude so that, you know, people will enjoy the set but at the same time be sort of, you know, punkish, like, oh yeah, look at me, I'm playing guitar kind of thing. Alright. So, wardrobe. So, for this set, I wasn't really sure what to do for a dress code because a lot of the time for these kind of bands that I want to portray, they don't really go out of the way to make themselves dress up or look like they're rich or they've got, you know, good dress sense. They just sort of wear casual clothes or whatever they want. So I was going to go for sort of like a casual sort of dress, maybe something even like I'm wearing now kind of thing. So, you know, just casual look. There's nothing really special about the wardrobe, but that's kind of what has a good effect about it, because they think, oh, they're just a bunch of guys like us, so we can also do that. So, yeah, so I think the casual look will suit this gig best. And this is my uh, performance persona, so for when I'm on stage, and um, I've got... Let's not play the video. Alright, so, I'll play the video. This is um, New Order performing a song that I'm actually going to do for my set, the ceremony. This one's a DD room, God bless the show. So we can create a couple of times again. There's another part of the night. So um, I'm kind of, see it's kind of out there, they're moving about, they're doing their thing, but at the same time they're just dressed how they want to be, they're not going out sort of stupid out of their way to make them look themselves like rock stars, they're just playing because they love to play. So for my performance in particular I'll be doing you know, for some songs I'll be quite energetic like they are, and then as you could tell when it got to the main bit of the song they all sort of started walking about. So it gives you sort of like more than one feel at the same time, rather than just being, you know, your standard rock song sort of thing. And, and, and I've broken the presentation. So I'll just click into the, the slide, that's it. There we go. Alright, this is stage movement. So so my movement, again, depends all on the song I'm sort of playing, so if I say it'll be sort of punk song, so I will be sort of moving about on that. But if I was, say, doing a different set, say if I'm doing I know, a funk set off the top of my head, I wouldn't be jumping about wearing casual clothes. So it all depends on sort of the scenario it's in. So the plan for my set is to sort of be out there, engaged in crowd, moving about for some songs, but then other songs I'll be more engage with the crowd but a bit more still because I want to give off a different vibe for each song so it makes people feel different things almost so the way I move differs on the song I play um, for this is my verbal and non-verbal communications and so I plan to use both these techniques to engage my audience so 
to communicate with the crowd non-verbally, I'll sort of be able to, you know, clap, wave my hands, do things like this, give gestures almost, to get the crowd uh, going without having to give too much command. Like, if I could be halfway through playing something, I could give some sort of gesture to the crowd. And if you, verbal communication is sort of just its standard, you know, talking to the audience, asking them to sing along, asking them to, you know, jump up and down, or maybe even giving them, before a song starts, you could tell the title of the song or why you're playing it. So it could be like either because you're dedicating the song or just why you thought it was appropriate to play. Right, the uh, nature before. So this is my stage setup. It's not going to be a very complicated setup. Um, I just put in the basic parts here, so you've got your drum kit, bass amp, um, two mics, and the monitors there. And of course there will be more things in here, so I'm probably going to have a pedal or something, but I couldn't find the box small enough to put it in. So, but this will just be a basic stage plan for what I sort of have in mind, very sort of minimalistic sort of thing, rather than being all expensive and crashing up there with equipment. So, my ability is a lead performer in mean, a performance environment. So, I'll be a good lead performer because I am confident on stage. I know how to play to a crowd and I can work well with other musicians because I've been doing this college course and playing with other musicians for the past few years. So, I know I can, well, I'll be good for those reasons. But the things I do need to work on are actually leading a band because I've never really been in a sort of scenario where I've had to lead a band myself as a bass player. Normally, I'm just sort of asked to play and I want to try and use my vocals a bit more for this set and I've never been very confident with my sort of vocal ability so that's something I'm going to work on for this set in particular and speaking clearly to an audience as well is something I want to work on because if I get nervous I can brush my words sometimes and it just sounds like gibberish so it's sort of thing to work on and then hopefully it will be a much better set. So these are my personal equipment needs. Uh, I didn't go too into detail, but because uh, I'm only really a bass player, I just need a bass, microphone and stand, an amp was being provided at the venue, I hope, with a DI box included, so you couldn't all complicate stuff. And a sort of cable, so I think like, I don't need really jack jack cables, I wouldn't really need XLRs in that sense. And then of course I'd have spares, cables and that. I'm not too fussed about bringing spare strings because often or not I've, the chance of me breaking a string is quite unlikely and they're quite expensive to buy. So I'll probably change my strings before the performance but I don't think they're necessary as spare. So there's my communication with technical staff and other musicians. So when I communicate with sound engineers or other staff I try to explain it as simply as possible and as quickly as I can like through normal verbal communication if I'm on stage. So, I'm like talking through the mic, I thought it sort of doesn't, you know, it doesn't sit well with the crowd if you're yelling through the microphone what you want or, you know, turn me up or turn it down or this isn't right. So if you try and do it in sort of a way that's subtle, <coughs> then it won't spoil the vibe of the set. And I always use my best, like, non-verbal communication skills at this point, or for other, band members as well, like, for example, if I need to talk to a guitarist who's on the other side of the stage, I won't walk over and talk to him because I'm plugged in, so I probably won't be able to get over there. So I'll sort of use hand gestures or try and nod my head to see what he wants to do. But with the drummer, normally because I can get a bit close to him, I can sort of lean over, say, when to start a song or when to count in and that sort of thing. But if I'm playing the song, obviously, I'll be sort of using more non-verbal communication rather than verbal. There you go. And these are the health and safety implications. So, health and safety is largely based on common sense. A lot of the time, I find it's not really sort of thing that you should be having to go through in depth. But you know, there's always rehearsals as well. So, once don't play too loud. So, under 100 decibels for the performance, and under 80 for rehearsals because you'll hurt your ears and get many problems. I like, can probably imagine. So. Just try and keep it low, and it can also be quite annoying for other people if you're playing loudly and they're walking past trying to do other work. And I'll check all my electrical gear is working as well, so I'll get it pat tested. Just make sure that it's not going to explode or go wrong on stage. 
and then there'll be no open water containers on, on stage at all, nearly out to just as a precaution. Because normally people bring water bottles, but I've seen lots of people kick them over and wreck monitors, so I'm just going to go with no water. And I haven't put it on here, but uh, another one I did think of would be keeping cables tidy, so taping them down, making sure they're not in the way. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, sort of keep it tidy. I suppose because if it's tidy then there's less chance of it going wrong and it should all be a good performance. So uh, good. Okay. I believe that's the end of it. Good. Uh, okay, there's a couple of questions then Jake. So um, you talk about band, who's in the band? Uh, it's going at the moment my idea is gonna be um, Charlie and James. Right. Charlie and James, yeah. so it's a three piece. Yeah, it's just gonna be a three piece sort of. So you're singing, yeah? Yeah, well, I'll be asking James to maybe like have an input on it as well because I think he'd be more than happy to do that. Okay, so when James is singing, what are you gonna? How are you gonna still ensure that that's still a lead performance? Um, because obviously, bass being a bass player, it's a little bit more challenging for us bass players and drummers to take a lead role in that scenario. Yeah, I've kind of got an idea. I've been watching videos of other bands that are led by bass players who normally do vocals, and when they're not singing, so they sort of have the idea they sort of walk to the front of the stage and you know show off a bit they give it all like oh yeah I'm gonna play it up here and they just sort of I've got the idea of sort of going just a bit out there and being a bit bold and brash with the sort of thing so to try and keep not to try and keep all the focus on me but to make it look like I'm the one leading the performance okay cool um you showed new order it's yeah. an example. So we, you're playing some New Order today. Yeah. You, tune. That's a that's a band. Is there a lead performer within New Order? Would you say, or is that not what not the kind of look you're going for? Well, I'd say the thing with New Order is because the reason I chose to play them in particular is because I really like the bass lines. I really like the band, and I kind of feel that when I see their playing, even though the bass player isn't the vocalist, he's almost the front man for the band because he writes some of their, he doesn't write all their songs, but the way he was, he introduced the song at first, and then he was sort of showing off a bit, and you know, your attention was very directed towards him rather than the other members of the band. So that's the main reason I kind of showed them, it's sort okay. of a way that I could be a lead performer without having to almost be, you know, being a bass player. All right, good stuff. Yeah, you mentioned a sort of punk and grunge persona, what does that mean? Sort of just like, uh, almost that dirty sort of, I don't really care look. Sort of like, yeah, other people are going to play their sort of pop songs or that, but I'm just going to be sort of noisy and dress how I want and, you know, do songs that aren't going to sound pretty and that. Like, for example, like, a lot of the songs I'm doing, the vocalists aren't the best vocalists on the planet, but it still gives a very powerful vibe off to it. Right, okay. So that's the kind of thing I'm aiming for. Are you going to do all the talking to the audience? Yes, that's kind of the plan. And are you talking between each song? Not every song. The idea I had would be that I would play the first song just out where I'd like to get the crowd into it and during the introduction of songs so I could start playing a little line and then talk to the crowd before the whole song starts off just to call, keep the energy flying, keep the music going. Yep, okay. That sounds, that sounds good. Uh, what is the set? Do you know yet? Or is that um, got kind of an idea, the set, I've got like, I think it's six songs at the minute, I'm not going to do all of them, I'm just sort of filing them down, but I've talked to Charlie and James about it, and they're all more than happy to learn them. And okay, get so that's good. Um, and then lastly, you talked about different vibes, so what, what do you want the audience reaction to be to your set? Well, at first I sort of want them to hear the songs, like the first two songs I'm doing, it was the one up, I actually the plan is for the song I played on this presentation to be the first song I'm doing. Okay. And then I'm going to ju jump straight into another one that kind of has a bit louder, a bit faster, keep the energy flowing. But when it gets sort of midway through the set, I plan to sort of like slow it down and just have people, you know, still have a lot of energy behind it, still have that kind of feel going, like, you know, the out there sort of feel, but at the same time a bit more, you know, Moody making you sort of. So how, how many tunes are you playing? I'm planning to do five because they're not very long songs. Okay. So that makes sense. Have you timed have you tried it yet or? I've um, timed it with the ones I've all got at the minute. The reason is 
um, because I'm picking them out. So it's just over a minute, but I'm going to be taking out one of the songs and I'm going to compensate for how quickly we'll be playing them and also for when I'll be sleeping. All right, good, excellent.